فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين we praise the Almighty who created us. We send blessings and salutations upon those who were sent to guide us. The messengers, all of them, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his companions, his household. May Allah bless them all and bless every one of us and grant us all goodness. The women more than the men because of their numbers. MashaAllah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I'm delighted to be in Bradford. And this is just a very, very simple, beautiful, interactive evening. And it's an evening of motivation where I've been so motivated just by seeing the numbers. SubhanAllah. I came in quite early. I think some of you do know that, right? And I met some of the brothers and sisters and they were quite excited. You know, I was parking my car and I noticed a little while later that there were two sisters in the car next to mine. And I think we would have needed an ambulance when they noticed who was in the car next to them. But the reason I say it is because we're just ordinary human beings. I'm just like you are. I'm as excited to see you. And I promise you, I do know as human beings, maybe you might think there is a great excitement because you've seen someone, you've benefited from someone, you might have seen them on various platforms of social media, and now you're seeing them in real life. So that excitement needs to be contained. We're just human. Yeah, we're just human, mashallah. But it's a good thing because, to be honest, at the moment across the globe, aren't we going through so many crises? Things are happening that are so confusing and everyone's dealing with it in so many different ways at times, it becomes such a mess because those who are not qualified to speak are speaking. And sometimes those who are qualified are not wise enough with their wisdom to be able to get that message across. So we feel let down. And sometimes, I know what happens to me, people say, why don't you speak up on X, Y and Z? The reality is perhaps I have. Maybe you haven't heard it. It doesn't mean I haven't spoken. And sometimes I'm not qualified to speak about that. Subhanallah. You know, yesterday I was speaking to a group of friends in another city. And they were speaking about the problems being faced by the Muslims today. And I said, it's not just with the Muslims. It's across the globe. Every country has issues. Even the most advanced countries have issues. You know, the most backward countries have issues. And the question that was coming up was, people are not, you know, the scholars are not speaking up. And I said, hang on. Just like when you have a problem with your health, may Allah give us all good health. Say, Amin. Amin. Important, because you never know which is the moment of acceptance. I'm sure you hear me every time we are saying something, we quickly make a dua. May Allah bless us. May Allah grant us ease. May Allah open our doors. May Allah give us shifa. May Allah grant rahma to all those who are in need of it. And that's every one of us. Say Amin again. The reason is no one knows which is the moment of acceptance of the prayer. Perhaps it might be that moment where that Amin is going to be heard loud and clear. And perhaps accepted in a way we want. Anyway, I'm going to get back to that. Inshallah. But... Just like if you were sick and ill and you went to the doctor and they told you you have a heart condition, would you remain with the GP or would you then go to someone else? Who is that someone else? Cardiologist. Some say specialist. That's what I want. So they're all doctors, aren't they? They've all studied medicine, haven't they? We all call them doctor so-and-so, doctor so-and-so, etc. But, but... Some of them have specialized. So you will not go to the same person when you know you've got an illness that requires specialized medicine. You go to that specialist and wallahi my brothers and sisters amongst us this evening, I'm very sure we have professionals 
doctors, whoever else, in whatever field you are in, and those who are serving, even if you're just serving your own families, and even if you're just serving, subhanAllah, a small circle of people, I promise you, I appreciate the sacrifice and the service and the Almighty, who He is the one who definitely appreciates what you're doing, without a doubt. So don't let people's comments ever let you down. Don't let people's comments make you think what you're doing is not important. Because what you are doing, if you believe it's important, it is absolutely important. Okay? So I was saying, in the same way, you have scholars. Some of them are GPs. Right? Some of them are cardiologists. I'm talking of spiritual cardiologists. Some of them perhaps are something else. Maybe dentists, orthodontists, etc., etc. You can see I'm talking about it because of mine, right? But that's it. So you do have this among the scholars. You don't expect everyone to do everything you want them to do because one of the diseases we have is to pass the buck. We pass the responsibility. And another disease we have sometimes, we deal with a problem in a way that creates an even bigger problem. I don't know if you've come across that. The people go about uh, saying bad things about the Prophet, peace be upon him, and we don't like it, and obviously it hurts us. But how we address it, we actually prove to them that the hooligans you thought we were, we are. May Allah safeguard us. We can express, and I promise you, every time something negative has been said about Islam, or about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or about you and I, it's a moment where people will be prepared to take in what information you're giving them regarding that person or that thing that is being hated on. I've arrived at a stage where I love it when someone really spews that hate. It's my moment to shine, mashallah. I promise you, show them that's not me. Have you guys seen any one of my Insta lives? If you've seen an Insta live session that I've done, please put up your hand so I can see. Oh, mashallah, quite encouraging. Okay. So you have people showing you the signs, right? Well, <laughs> they say we show you the signs because Instagram has those signs to show you. See? Do you know what I mean? If they want to swear you and they want to, they want to show you bad signs, it's because the signs are available for you to express yourself. But they don't know you. They're judging you based on your dress. They're judging you based on what you look like, on your name, etc. And so many different factors. Whose weakness is it? Theirs or yours? It's theirs. If you are going to, for a moment, respond to them in a negative way, such that you prove to them what you guys believed about me is actually true, and I'm even worse than that. In that case, you've lost. But if you rise and shine and show them, guy... You know, you're swearing me. I'm not going to swear you back. No way. Your bad doesn't have to make me become bad. Your weakness doesn't have to make me develop the same weakness or worse. But unfortunately, sometimes due to human nature and frustration, we become so bad, we start swearing back. We get up and yell. I'm not saying don't deal with the matter. Deal with it in a beautiful way. Go back to the prophetic way of dealing with things. And this is where we learn from Muhammad wasallam. They swore him in his presence, which is a very big, big difference. Imagine people today might be saying that the Prophet ﷺ was something that he wasn't. And they're using something derogatory in order to irk you and I. Yes, it hurts us. Yes, it, we don't like it. Yes, we want to do something about it in a way that they can learn and they can come to the straight path. But remember there was a day when they did worse than that to the messenger himself, physically, in person. How did he react? I want to take you to one example. And you know the example, but we're going to recap. Have you heard of the story of Ta'if? Ta'if? Rings a bell, doesn't it? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he was persecuted in Mecca, when he, was, when he struggled in Mecca with so many different issues that he was faced, as the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know what? He went to Ta'if and he called them towards goodness. And what did they do? 
Astaghfirullah. They swore at him. They threw stones at him. They made him bleed. They chased him. They actually chased him physically out of Taif. What happened? How did he react? How did he retaliate? I tell you. In the same way it would hurt us. Definitely the angels told him, you know what? We're the angels of the mountains. If you want to crush these people, you just have to say crush them and they're gone. The mountains, the two mountains, you know, Taif is a valley, right? We can bring these two together, these people are gone. He says, I am sent as a mercy. Oh Allah, guide them, they don't know what they're doing. Oh Allah, if you're not going to guide them, at least guide their offspring. He says, Oh Allah, I'm complaining to you about my own weakness. You've given me a duty to fulfill. And look at the response. If he wanted, he could have destroyed them. He could have. That's what we believe. But he didn't. A lesson for all of us to say, when we get upset, whether it's about you, whether it's about your religion, whether it's about the messenger, peace be upon him, whom we hold in the highest esteem. Yes, we do get upset when others say bad words. We do. But how to react to it? I promise you, people are waiting. People are waiting for the goodness that we should be showing them and they will melt. They will melt. We are lacking character and conduct across the globe as Muslims. Yet it is the faith that tells you that one of the key ways of getting into paradise is by development of your character and conduct. When the messenger, peace be upon him, was asked, O messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what are the characteristics that would lead people to paradise? The people of paradise, what would have got them into paradise? He said, taqwa allahi wa husnul khuluqi. Two things. The relationship with your maker and the greatness of your character and conduct. Wow. I look at people and I say, sometimes we appear so religious and we're hypocrites. I'm not saying that it's not important to appear religious or I'm not belittling that. But I am saying your responsibilities are great. Develop whatever you can first. Some people say, well, you know what? Before I can appear religious, I want to start you know, trying to develop myself this way and that way. And sometimes shaitan doesn't allow you to do anything because you believe you want to do one before another. Can I tell you what the true answer is? Develop whatever is easy for you and be happy with it. And keep going for as long as every day you're moving forward. Some people through their character and conduct will reach levels of the loved ones of Allah. His friends and even the prophets of Allah. Do you know that? It's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He says to the degree that myself and the one with great character will be together in paradise. I am here this evening in Bradford to tell you, my brothers and sisters, develop your character. Learn to speak to people with respect. Learn to understand that the same freedom you have to believe what you are believing and to practice what you believe is correct, everyone else has the same right. And Allah's given everyone a brain. And Allah's given every brain a different level of understanding. That's Allah's plan. If He wanted, He could have put in a little chip where everyone would think the same and have the same capacity. But Allah says, no, I want some people to be able to understand things in this way and some in that way and some... He knows the reason. So, yes, we're all passionate about what we believe is right. But remember, your duty is to talk about it, to convince people, to discuss it in a very, very respectful way if the, if the opportunity arises. But on top of that, at the end of the day, Leave it to the person to make their mind up. The Prophet, peace be upon him, in person, spoke to some people about the deen, the religion, about Islam, and they rejected his message. Yet he was the most eloquent of the lot, and he was there in person. Imagine if the Prophet, peace be upon him, was here in person. 
to tell us something. People say, I wish that was the case. I say, I don't wish that was the case. Because we would embarrass him. We would say, no, I don't think I'm ready for all of what you're saying right now. It can happen. So Allah's blessing is, He's kept us in a generation where we haven't seen the Prophet, peace be upon him. But we, without seeing him, we believe. We believe. That's a very high level. But if that belief makes your character such that you come across in an arrogant way, you haven't followed the Prophet, peace be upon him. Do you know the Prophet sallallahu may Allah grant us all strength myself to begin with. He was such that when he sat with his people, a stranger wouldn't distinguish who exactly was the Prophet, peace be upon him. If they didn't know, unless it was the heart of a believer that picked up the nur, the nur meaning the light, you can tell, oh, this must be him. That's why when the foreigners used to come, they used to say, Ayyukum Muhammad. Which one of you is Muhammad here? Subhanallah. But if he was one of those who sat on a throne and made it seem to everyone that I am the big boss here, do you know what? It wouldn't have been on the level of character and conduct that he was upon. He was on the highest level of character and conduct. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have no doubt. We always say the best of creation, the most noble of all messengers of Allah. I had an email yesterday telling me that when you use the word creation, it sounds a little bit derogatory. Why don't you just say the best of messengers, the best of humankind? So I replied saying the best of creation confirms being better than the angels. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So when you say the best of creation, it's actually confirming that it goes higher. Afdalul khalqi. It goes a little bit higher than what you think. It's not just the best of mankind, best of creation. But that's us who believe. There will be others who don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, at all. There will be people who don't believe in God, who don't believe at all in religion. Can I tell you something? If you have the opportunity to convey to them your message of goodness, do so with utmost respect, in the most beautiful fashion. And the best way of doing it is just through your character and conduct. And thereafter, the next stage. And then the next one. And then, so someone will get closer to you because of your character. You greeted them. You made them feel like they're part of the human family. You didn't discriminate against them. May Allah forgive us wherever we have in the past, present, or where we may falter sometimes in the future unintentionally. May Allah grant us goodness and purification. Then they will greet you. They might smile at you when you've broken into a smile. Then you have the opportunity to say a word. And when you do, a day may come when they will show an interest in what is it that's driving you to be so positive. And then you can throw in your word. The problem with us, you look at someone who's different from you. And that's it. If you could spit, you would spit on the side. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us, but isn't it a reality? You see someone different from you. They belong to a different sect of Islam. We may disagree very strongly with what they're saying. Does that give you a license to become a person who's low in character and conduct? Spewing the same that they may be spewing, for example. What made you different? Go back to the Prophet ﷺ. Look at what he did in Ta'if. Have you raised your hands to make dua for them? I give you an example of Brother Arnud van Doorn. Some of you might have heard that name. In the Netherlands, what they did, they made a movie against the Prophet ﷺ that was really, really nasty, depicting Islam as very bad and the Prophet, peace be upon him, as even worse. Astaghfirullah. And I remember many, many years back, and I've still been saying the same thing, that you go back to the supplications of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you will find that he used to pray for those who hated him. Positive prayer. Who was the one who hated him the most? What was his name initially in Mecca? Abu Jahl, right? Abu Jahl, that means father of ignorance. You know, the Arabs had this way of up to today. They say father of this and father of that. Not necessarily is that your child. Sometimes it's just a quality. Ignorance, father of ignorance, you know. So he was known as Abu Jahl. But actually his name was Amr ibn Hisham. 
So Amr is spelt with Ain, Mim, and Ra. The first three letters. With Amr, there is a little wow which is silent after, depicting that it is not Umar. But it's written exactly as Umar is written. Ain, Mim, and Ra. The difference is there's a wow after the Ra when it comes to Amr, and there's no wow after the Ra when it comes to Umar. That's how you know this is Umar and this is Amr. So one man's name was Umar ibn al-Khattab. He used to hate the Prophet, peace be upon him. He decided, I'm going to murder this guy. Astaghfirullah. And Abu Jahl was the other one. His name was Amr ibn Hisham. One day the Prophet, peace be upon him, raised his hands and he says, Allahumma, oh my Lord, oh my Allah. A'izzan Islam bi ahad al One of these two Umars, meaning they both have the Amr in their names, right? Ain Mimra. One of these two Umars. Guide them to Islam so that we can be strengthened. These are strong men. They're, they're using their abilities and whatever you've given them to fight your deen. If you bring them to the deen, they will use these resources in order to strengthen this deen. <coughs> How many of us would look at people who have really done nasty things against Islam today? If I were to tell you, think of the biggest enemy of Islam. A lot of you would think of a name. <laughs> A name. Have you ever said, Oh Allah, soften his heart. Oh Allah, guide him to the deen. If you did, you have prophetic qualities to a lower degree. But it's something really good that you have. You've dealt with a lot of hate that would bog you down as a person. And you're now looking at positives even from the most negative people. When you can look at someone who feels themselves that they're negative, but you can make them feel positive, you already have helped in a big way, starting with helping yourself. Because they're part of society, they're part of the globe. So, no sooner did that dua come about from the Prophet Sallallahu blessed lips, than Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu decides, I'm going out. Took his sword, he's going out to murder this man. But on the other hand, there was a dua, supplication made. Oh Allah, soften their hearts, guide them. And when he went to his sister's house, and he started beating them up, and then he read a few verses of the Qur'an. The Qur'an, that book up to today, people, detractors will tell you, it has in it this, it has in it that, it is bad, it is what? Let me tell you, if you know the Qur'an in the correct context of the Qur'an, you will be mesmerized. Even the non-Muslims have been mesmerized when they know the correct context of the verses of the Qur'an. And when they learn from it, it's just a divine book. It is unlike any other book. You can tell it straight away. It's worlds apart. So when he read the first few verses of Surah Taha, and that was carefully selected by Allah, He didn't know that, but Allah knew that. You know, you and I, things happen to us. We think we did it, but we don't know Allah did it. Can I give you one beautiful example again? I was catching a flight once. I was flying from Dubai to Johannesburg. Okay, That's a long flight, seven and a half hours. Okay, I see there's a brother smiling because I met him also on the plane. He's sitting right in front of me. Uh... So, so what happened is, I was flying from Dubai to Johannesburg. I had a ticket. I had booked my seat. Normally, we, a day or two before, we uh, check in and all that online just to make sure everything's okay. And uh, I found myself a seat where there is no one next to me. But what happens a lot of the times is someone then books the seat next to you. And they, no one knows who it is. There is a little app called Fly With Me, which is still up and coming where if you log in your details it it tells you everyone else who's flying at the same airport from your buddies from your contact list and what flight they're going to be on and wherever if they've allowed that to happen within that contact list but that is a little bit dangerous i don't use it but it's there however uh i booked my seat and it was 7a 7a sitting quite near the front And as I walked in, I saw there was a woman seated on 7B. But like 
There's nothing wrong in sitting on 7A. Absolutely nothing wrong. But I thought she might not be so comfortable seeing a guy with a massive beard, you know, and seeing a guy that's dressed in this way and she might just like sort of gulp a few gulps and, you know, it, it might, she might be uncomfortable. So without me giving her the impression that this is my seat, I started looking for another seat, right? So I'm looking this way and that way. She was one too sharp. She was, I, I couldn't tell that she was a Muslim. I couldn't tell. And I, as much as I don't like to judge people, but I'm just letting you know, there was no sign there to say she's a Muslim woman. In fact, I was trying to make it comfortable for her. And so she looks at me and she says, sorry, Mufti Mink. <laughs> and I almost fainted. You know the same ambulance we wanted for the other sisters here? They would have needed it for me there. I almost fainted. And, and I said, sorry? She said, Salam Alaikum. I've been praying that I meet you. I've been praying to Allah for a few years that I meet you. I swear. And now he's given me seven hours with you. <laughs> and you want to go away. It's not fair. She tells the air hostess, make sure he sits on his seat. <laughs> you see? And guess what? There were no empty seats. So I said, no, sister, don't worry. I'm sitting. I'm right with you. And I didn't. I was really looking forward to my sleep that day. <laughs> And it didn't come. Because the sister really, she was weeping, she was crying. She, initially she was crying. She said, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And she says, no, I am a Muslim. And, and like I say, I'm a, we don't judge. But sometimes if I tell you, look, I didn't recognize the person. I'm just telling you that had I known she was Muslim, perhaps I'd have greeted her, perhaps whatever. It's okay, it's fine. But now I got to know her. Do you know something? She told me she hasn't missed at the Hajjud for five years. She said, just pray for me. I said, sister, you know your struggles? Your struggles, I don't know them. But I want to tell you, I don't read the Hajjud <laughs> as regularly as you do. I'm not condoning anything. I'm just showing you people do things and get to Allah in whatever way is easier for them. Don't belittle that. Encourage it. Don't stop them. If someone else had to look at the sister, they would have said, sister, you know what? Forget about going to Jahannam, you're already there. But watch the people next to you, they might go as well. That's how some people discourage others based on what they look like. That's the same thing people do to guys like me, where they just look at you and they say, hate preacher. Oh, hate preacher, what's hate? Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. This is the sickness that we have as Muslims amongst ourselves. And she started talking to me about issues that I was shocked about. They were connected to family, they were connected to, uh, you know, finances and halal and haram. And I'm busy thinking the small fine details of making sure that every penny that I've earned is halal would have probably been one of the factors why Allah answered her prayer in a way that she knows Allah answered this dua of mine. Do you know what I'm trying to say here? You and I make a dua to Allah. MashaAllah, we ask Allah. And you know, it does, things do happen in our lives. But imagine you made a dua to Allah that you want something. And that thing, Allah sent it straight to you. A year, two years, three years later. But it came right to you. Doesn't it develop your conviction in Allah to say, you heard me. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. My brothers and sisters, I want to cry talking about it right now. Because I know. Details, I can't let you, let you know the details of what I know. But that day, I learned more than I had learned in a long, long time. It changed me a lot. And I learned that there are so many people out there who have their relationship with Allah. They have their struggles we don't know about. They, have, they want to be upon the best possible level, but they are struggling to get there. Give them a moment. Respect them. Speak to them. Don't just ignore them. Greet them. Smile at them. Be genuine with them. Feel within your heart that you know what? This is my brother, my sister. Don't have an ulterior motive at the back that is materialistic or that is derogatory or sinful. But do it genuinely for the sake of Allah. They will feel the energy in your expression. 
Subhanallah. They will feel the energy around you as you walk because they know for a fact this person is legit, genuine, complete. In the sense that when I say complete, I don't mean as an individual perfect, but what I mean is completely genuine. You can. So this is an example of a dua being accepted from a person that you and I, had it been up to us, we would have probably doomed them already. The Prophet ﷺ makes a dua for Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu as he's reading the Qur'an, a verse that he always had a question regarding, an issue that he always had a question regarding, was answered in that verse. Do you know what it was? مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى We have not revealed this revelation to you, O Muhammad wasallam, for it to be a means of your distress. We haven't revealed the rules and regulations to make your life difficult. No. They are there as a reminder for those who are conscious of the Almighty. It will make your life easier. Yes, there are rules and regulations and a lot of them, but they are there to create discipline within your life so that you enjoy the life with purity, with goodness, with calmness. Immediately he knew this is from the maker. Do you know why? He had that question. And many people have the question to this day, why does Islam have so many rules and so many regulations? They had the question a long time back, the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the Makkah period, when rules and regulations were not even fully set at all. Most rules came in Medina. So Allah responded. And as a result, He says, you know what? He shed a tear. He says, take me to Muhammad, peace be upon him. They saw that this man softened up. They decided to be taking him. They took him to the place where they were. And as he's entering, he says, O Messenger of Allah! Because, you know, when he was entering the door, he had his, there was a bit of blood on him, he had his sword with him, and he's coming through the door, and Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib is waiting at the door. It was the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam, radiallahu an. And on one hand, they know of the prayer that the Prophet ﷺ made for the guidance of this man. The other hand, they also know this guy is very, very dangerous. So they don't want to harm him, but they want to be prepared in case he harms anyone. So Hamza says, Hada Umar. He says, This is Umar. He's coming in. Oh Allah, if you intend goodness from this man, let him accept Islam. And if he intends any harm, let it become easy for us to overcome him. Now they're waiting. As he storms into the room, he says, Oh Messenger of Allah. Now, the minute you say, Oh Messenger of Allah, what does it mean? You're confirming something. He would have come in and said, Oh Muhammad, astaghfirullah, peace be upon him. But that's his name. But he comes and says, Ya Rasulullah. As soon as he said that, everyone was softened because they knew this man's already acknowledging he is a messenger of Allah, messenger of God, right? He says, Inni ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna ka'abduhu wa rasuluhu. He says, I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides the Maker, besides Allah, right? And I bear witness you are a messenger. You are a messenger of God, subhanahu of Allah. And immediately, immediately, there was great takbir in the room and everyone was excited and, and, and subhanallah, things changed. Why do I raise this? Let's go back to the reason. The reason is when there was an enemy, the Prophet, peace be upon him, made a good dua, it was accepted and the man came. The same thing happened where people prayed for those who did bad, the cartoons or the videos or anything else, people fighting uh, Muslim women or Muslim men or Islam or anything to do with it, try the good positive prayer. It works. It works. There's so much that has happened in the last few years and so much that is happening. On one hand, like I started this talk by saying, you know what, there is a lot of negativity, but I want to give you good news. There is the other side of the coin, a lot of positive happening, a lot of it. How many of us are more conscious of things we do? How many of us reach out? How many of us for the first time we're reaching out to people we never reached out to? How many mosques have opened up for open days explaining to people what Islam is all about and that it doesn't teach what the small band of people are promoting? That never happened. 
But it was an opportunity when it arose and people did it. I was in Blackburn yesterday. And they were explaining to me how the mosques are raising funds to give to the hospitals. Amounts that are needed for various apparatus and beds and a few of these specialized chairs and so on. And where does it come from? With the name of the mosque, it's there. This has been donated by Masjid this and Masjid that. And it's such a lovely feeling to see people, humankind, of all faiths, races, inclinations, be they whatever, however they think. And here they are at a time of need. Doesn't matter. Come, we're going to help you. This didn't happen some years back. And I think it's a very good model. Subhanallah. For the hospital. The mosques collecting money for hospitals. Muslims, non-Muslims. I don't care. I just know that it's going to another human being. They're going to benefit. And you know what? When we're sick and ill, we go and we benefit as well. Sadaqa jariya. That's what it's called. A charity continuously providing. You know, the best of charities are those that last a long time. They call sadaqa jariya. Jariya means it carries on. So if you planted a tree, you know what the hadith says? Every time any human... Bird, animal benefits from the shade of it or the fruit of it. You get a reward even if you've died. Did you hear that? The shade of a tree, you get a reward. Who sat under it? An old man. He wasn't even a Muslim. A guy or a person or an animal or a dog or a pig. You thought of it? Pig is an animal. Yeah. Who got a reward? The one who... The one whose intention when he planted that tree was, you know what, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah and I'd like everyone and anyone to benefit from it. If that is the case and a tree or a well, when you drill a well in the middle of Hawaii where you don't even know if Muslims exist, for example, and people are drinking water from there, it's enough, you're a human being, you've done it. You've done it. Amazing. Can I tell you, the Muslims are very charitable. And right now, what's happened? We've become more and more conscious of these projects. And we've been reaching out to people in a way we haven't before. And it's having an impact. So I was telling you, this brother from the Netherlands, one day he decided, subhanallah, you know what? I, and it's somebody's dua, I promise you. He started looking into Islam. Every time he looked into it, he felt something. He felt something. But he was involved in the whole movie. Until a day came and the movie was out. And people have seen it and the, the people died because of it. You know, because of how Muslims are. When they want to protest something, the protests become violent. And the violence becomes lethal. And that results in the loss of life. But the matter you're dealing with hasn't been solved. This is what I was saying earlier. That they, there's no need to become hooligans. Not at all. You can promote what you want. You can say, I'm sad about it. You can say, I don't like it. You can discuss it. You can raise it. But do it in a respectful way because that will bring people closer to the truth. They'll understand. So this man says, a day came. I kept on feeling that this is the truth. This is the truth. Allahu Akbar. Amazing. And he went to the mosque. He went once. He went again. And he declared his shahada. I'm talking of very recently, just a few years ago. A few weeks ago, one of his buddies declared shahada. All on his own. And here we are becoming so apologetic, we don't even want to have anything to do with Islam. I know people who've changed their names from Khadija to Dija. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. Not legal names, but I mean, they don't want to be called that anymore. It's a weakness. Proud to be Khadija. Tell them Khadija, yeah. <laughs> kha, it's the Kha. Even teach them how to pronounce it. It's good. If they know you're a lovely person, they won't mind calling you Kha, Kha, Khadija. It's fine, you're a good person. You're a lovely person. They wouldn't mind calling you Muhammad. Look at our brother Mo Salah, for example. Muhammad. Just an example. There are so many others. They, they don't mind calling him Muhammad, do they? They don't. If they've seen a good side of a person, nobody, it's human nature. You don't, you're not really worried, but the thing is, the opportunities that you and I get to rise and shine, 
we don't sometimes. We show the opposite. So this guy accepted Islam, the other guy accepted Islam. And I want to tell you something. My objective is never to convert someone. Never. That's in the hands of the Almighty. Guidance is in the hands of the Almighty. Ma alayna illa al The Quran says our duty is just to convey a message. Just let you know. Look, this is the truth. This is what I believe. This is what it is. You have any questions? Well, here are the answers that I can provide for these questions. Or maybe I'll find out for you and that's it. Leave it at that. Let them make their minds up. They may, they may not. This is what the Prophet ﷺ was told. And these are the verses of the Qur'an. Never did Allah say, you know what? You've got to convert the people. You've got to revert the people. He always says, it's in my hands. فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ wa وَعَلَيْنَ الْحِسَابِ Oh Messenger, for you, your duty is to just convey the message. The rest of it is up to us. We'll do it. I'm here today. I promise you, one of my intentions is to improve myself. To improve myself. And thereafter, to try and say a word or two that can perhaps, you know, make people feel a little bit more motivated, inshallah. They call it a motivational evening. Yeah, it is. In all honesty, it is. You notice the topic we have is just a motivational topic. Yes, it's faith-based, but it's motivation, mashallah. So I want you never to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah is great. No matter what you're going through, that will come to pass. It has to come to pass. Don't lose hope. Keep going. If you think you have a problem, there are others who have bigger problems than you. When you want solution to your problems, start helping people who have issues. And you'll see how blessed you are. I promise you. Help people who are in difficulty, in hardship. Help them. Even in a small way. Even if it's through a prayer. Even if it's reaching out to them with a smile. Reach out to them with a smile. It's an act of charity. It will release their stress and their, you know, their thoughts, negative thoughts, just through a smile. Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, they told me I was due to speak for half an hour, but I was so motivated that I overshot. I hope it's okay. Okay. Can I carry on? You sure? So mashallah, the brother seated here, I've got to tell you something about him. So I just saw him walking in now and I, I was really happy. And uh, I decided, subhanallah, let me say something. So I was flying. I can't remember from where to where. Maybe he would remember. Where was it? Malaysia. We were going to Malaysia. And uh, I was so, so fortunate to be upgraded, mashallah. You know, when you have an upgrade, it's like a big deal, you know. <laughs> and I'm sitting in this little place here and I see next to me there's a brother. And I greeted him and I... Uh, he didn't know who I was, I think. Um, I, I don't think he knew who I was. I could tell that. And a little while later, uh, we spoke. I gave him my number, I think, if I'm not mistaken. He told me his name. He gave me his number. And uh, that's it. We left. And the following day, he came to the event. He came to the event in Kuala Lumpur. And I saw the brother sitting and I said, wow, you? He said, yeah, we met yesterday. Yes, we did. He says, I told my, I think was it your wife or someone? He told his family that I was with so-and-so. They said, what? You crazy? Can't be. You know? It's amazing. And we've become friends ever since. Although we may not be in touch every day, but it's a good feeling. You met someone, he left a good impression. I hope I did the same. That's it. I didn't have to come and tell him, you know, I'm a big guy and I'm a small guy and whatever. You're nobody. You're just a human being. It's okay. People know you, don't know you. The other day I was with a group of friends. So somebody came. And they said, do you know who this is? And the person says, no. Imagine how I felt. <laughs> was it necessary to say, do you know who this is? Is that what you think I would have liked? If they don't know, they don't know. It's fine. So what? Not everyone needs to know you. I don't. But people think that that's what needs to happen. You need to be known. You don't. There are some people who are not known on earth, but they're known by the angels because their good deeds keep going up. Those are the superheroes. And there are some people who are well known on earth, but they are not known by the angels because there are no good deeds going up. The only thing they have is popularity. We need to understand, work towards serving, and the Almighty will do the rest. You could have passed your test without being known. And you could have passed your test and it could have been headlines. So what? For as long as you did well, and you know that you did your best, you're set to go. Alhamdulillah. 
So my brother, shukran for making it uh, here this evening. Not just you, but every one of us. You know, I was uh, told this event is starting at 6 p.m. Is that what you were told? Okay. I decided to come by quarter to five. Okay. So I was here at quarter to five. And that's when we parked the car there. And that's when I came in. And uh, I told the brothers, uh, you know what, I need to see someone. Perhaps I'll go and come back. They said, yeah, that's fine. We're kicking off at six, inshallah. And I saw brothers and sisters who came before me, before me. And the event's only kicking off at six. Imagine how I felt. I felt, hey, wow, we're starting off at six. You guys are here already. Already. May Allah bless you guys. May Allah bless everyone. Everyone. You know... I want to end with something very interesting. Also another experience that motivated me. It moved me. You see, everyone should believe that they have a good relationship with Allah or they're trying to improve in their relationship with their maker. Everyone should believe that within. I've been to West Africa. West Africa. If I were to ask you, what do you know about West Africa? What do you know about Nigeria? What do you know about Sierra Leone, Ghana, Gambia, Liberia? What do you know about these places? I don't think many of you would know much. And if you did, can I ask you a question? Would it be positive or negative? Can you say it? Negative. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you know what? I felt so, so rejuvenated when I saw the mosques packed and I saw the fajr, the early morning prayer with no space. And I saw people speaking, you know, the Quranic language. And I saw the young and the old. I promise you, I spoke to a group and I, they told me to give them some nasiha. And I told them, don't miss your prayers, your five daily prayers are must. You know what they told me? Talk about something else. In our community, nobody, nobody misses a salah. I promise you, I felt like I was so weak myself. And I'm thinking, you know what? We all hope that our place in paradise is reserved. I swear we will see those guys way ahead of us there. Way ahead of us. Recently I saw a clip of little children from Benin. Before Salatul Fajr. And they have no electricity. They were sitting around a fire sharing the Quran. And becoming half with boys and girls. Three in the morning. And they said this happens every day. Have you guys seen that clip? A lot of you may have or some of you may have. I've seen that clip. Amazing. Amazing. And then I think to myself, ah, you know what? I can do better with my Quran. Come on, these are little people. And what are they doing? They're trying to please the Almighty. Their resources are small, little, few. They don't even have technology. They don't even have a tap, from, a tap for water. And they're so happy. They'll share a little drum of semi-dirty water to make wudu and to whatever else and they're not really worried about food. A small little piece of bread is shared by two people. And so many other things. I've seen this with my eyes. And I tell myself, we are so fortunate, but we are still a long, long way to go. However, don't lose hope. In your circumstances, given your situation, all you need to promise the Almighty is you're going to try to be a better person every day and to become better and not to become worse. May Allah strengthen me and strengthen every one of us. So that's the reason why I just fell in love with that part of the world. Because it's something totally different. On one hand, we've heard negatives. If you read the papers and you follow the media about a country such as Nigeria, they will only have negatives. They will only tell you how many people robbed how many other people and what else happened and everything else. But they won't tell you how many millions and billions of people. Well, not billions, but I mean a lot of people are lovely individuals who really care 
and they really have a heart made of gold. My travels have definitely woken me up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of us goodness. May Allah open our doors. I see brother Ohi is already to my left. You see he's moved here, coming in for the kill. You see? Allah bless you. Oh, he wants to, he's now pretending like he wants to give me water. Just water. So is that like a halfway break? We can go on for another hour? Oh, there, there it goes, inshallah. But my brothers and sisters, shukran. The, inshallah, we will be having a dinner I th- as far as I know. I'm going to try and meet every one of you on your way out, inshallah. There is a book for every single person. We'll try and uh, meet as many people as we can. And uh, perhaps, uh, inshallah, we may not get an opportunity to speak much because if there are a few hundred people, a minute with each would mean 500 minutes, right? Uh, but inshallah, I'll try. I'll try my best at least to, at least to, to greet uh, that little moment, it will inspire me more than anyone else. And I'm so happy to see you guys. Once again, thank you so much. May Allah bless you guys. And I hope and pray that this can be a turning point in our lives, even if it's a small turning point, but at least something that we can take home and we can feel that connection with Allah. Because I promise you, it's very, very real. If I were to tell you, I love you guys for the sake of Allah. There's no way that I'd be telling a lie. It's so true. I feel the connection. I actually feel the genuineness. I mean, you wouldn't have just come here if you didn't feel that there was reason to come. So I hope that we we can all go back and spread the good message. And uh, you can see I don't even want to get off the stage, but I have to.